Hi, so uh, welcome. This is uh, the second in what I hope to be a, a series on uh, speeches given before uh, audio recordings. And so now you'll be able to have a, a recording of it. Uh, this is from Robespierre. Our first one was from Robespierre uh, in February of 1794. This one is in July. And by this time, he's kind of fallen out of popular favor. Um, this is his last speech on the convention to the, the uh, revolutionary government of France. And this one was never published. Or I shouldn't say never published. Obviously, it was published at least once. But <clears throat> uh, most of the speeches at that time were immediately published. This one was approved to be immediately published. But then his... His rivals within the convention stopped that. He did deliver it uh, on the floor or in the Jacobin Club um, amid acclamation. It never reached the public, the French public, though. Um, when he went back to the convention the next day after this speech, uh, he was shouted down um, and then later that night arrested after he tried to commit suicide. And then he was sent to the guillotine. Um and executed as an enemy of the state. So, without further ado, the last speech of Robespierre at the convention, July 26, 1794. When I see the mass of vices, the torrent of the revolution has rolled pell-mell with the civic virtues, I have sometimes trembled for fear of become tainted in the eyes of posterity by the impure vicinage of those perverse men who mingled in the ranks of sincere defenders of humanity. But the overthrow of the rival fraction factions has, as it were, emancipated all the vices. They believe that the only question for them was to make division of the country as a booty rather than make her free and prosperous. I am thankful that the fury that animates them against everything that opposes itself to their projects has traced the line of demarcation between them and all right-minded people. But if the Vers and the Catalines of France believe themselves already far enough advanced in the career of crime to expose on the rostrum the head of their accusers, I also have but now promised my fellow citizens a testament formidable to the oppressors of the people, and I bequeath to them from this moment O proborium and death. I conceive that it is easy for the League of Tyrants of the World to overwhelm a man, but I also know that there are duties of one who can die in defending the cause of humanity. I have seen in history all defenders of liberty overcome by ill fortune or by calumny. Some are their oppressors and their assass assassins, also met their death. The good and the bad, the tyrants and the friends of liberty, disappear from the earth, but under different conditions. Frenchmen, do not allow your enemies to degrade your souls and to unnerve your virtues by a blameful heresy. No, Chayumet, no, Fochet. Death is not an unending sleep. Citizens, efface from the tombstones this impious maxim which throws a funeral crepe upon all nature and flings insults upon death. Rather, engrave that death is the beginning of immortality. My people remember that if in the Republic justice does not reign with absolute sway, and if this word does not signify love of equality and of country, then liberty is but a vain phrase. O oh, people who are feared, whom one flatters, who you are despised, you who are acknowledged sovereign and are ever being treated as a slave, remember that wherever justice does not reign, it is the passions of the magistrates that reign instead, and that the people have changed their chains and not their destinies. Remember that there exists in your bosom a league of knaves struggling against tr public virtue, and that it has a greater influence than yourselves upon your own affairs, a league that dreads you and flatters you in the mass, but proscribes you in detail in the person of all good citizens. Also recall it that instead of sacrificing this handful of knaves for your happiness, your enemies wish to sacrifice you to this handful of knaves, authors of all evils and the only obstacles to public prosperity. 
Know then that any man who will rise to defend public right and public morals will be overwhelmed with outrage and proscribed by the knaves. Know also that every friend of liberty will ever be placed between duty and calumny. That those who cannot be accused of treason will be accused of ambition. That the influence of uprightness and in principles will be compared to tyranny and the violence of factions. That your confidence and your esteem will become certificates of prescription for all your friends. That the cries of oppressed patriotism will be called cries of sedition. And that, as they do not dare to attack you in mass, you will be proscribed in detail in the person of all good citizens until the ambitions shall have organized their tyranny. Such is the empire of the tyrants armed against you. Such is the influence of the league with corrupt men, ever inclined to serve them. Thus the unprincipled wretches impose upon us law to force us to betray the people, under penalty of being called dictators. Shall we subscribe to this law? No. Let us defend the people at risk of becoming their victims. Let us hasten to the scaffold by the path of crime, and we by that of virtue. Shall we say that all is well? Shall we continue to praise by force of habit or practice that which is wrong? We would ruin the country. We shall reveal the hidden abuses. We shall denounce the traitors. We shall be told that we are unsettling the constituted authorities, that we are endeavoring to acquire personal influence at their cost. What are we to do? We are to do our duty. What objection can be made to him who wishes to tell the truth and who consents to die for it? Let us then say that there exists a conspiracy against public liberty, that it owes its strength to a criminal coalition that is intriguing even in the bosom of the convention, that this coalition has accomplices in the Committee of General Safety and in the offices of this committee, which they control, that the enemies of the Republic have opposed this committee to the Committee of Public Safety, and have thus constituted two governments, that members of the Committee of Public Safety have entered into a scheme of mischief, and that the coalition thus formed tries to ruin all patriots and the fatherland. What is the remedy of this evil? Punish the traitors, renew the offices of the Committee of General Safety, weed out the committee itself, and subordinate it to the Committee of Public Safety. Weed out the Committee of Public Safety also. Constitute the unity of the government under the supreme authority of the National Convention, which is the center and the judge, and thus crush all factions by the weight of national authority, in order to erect upon their ruins the power of justice and of liberty. Such are my principles. If it be impossible to support them without being taken for an ambitious one, I shall conclude that principles are prescribed, and that tyranny reigns among us, but not that I should remain silent. For what can be objected to a man who is in the right, and knows how to die for his country? I was created to battle against crime, not to govern over it. The time has not come when upright men may serve their country with impunity. The defenders of liberty will be but outlaws, so long as a horde of knaves shall rule. So, that's Robespierre's last speech. Um, not exactly conciliatory, I wouldn't say, um, but pretty interesting, nonetheless, to see the uh, the two different the difference that a few months makes, and and the the rhetoric, for lack of a better word, that he used um, in that one. And so, um, yeah, we'll do another speech in another few days. If you've got a recommendation or something you'd like to hear, go ahead and leave it in the comments, and uh, we'll see you then. Thanks. Bye.